I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Our first order of, uh, at 6.30 p.m. Our first order of today was going to be to approve the minutes from December 11th, 2023. Motion we approve the minutes from December 11th. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, three nothing. All right, next order of business is new business. Appoint a part-time police officer. Chief. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming. So I bring to you today uh, Alyssa Farnham. Alyssa applied uh, to be one of our part-time officers. And as we do in historic fashion, the full-timers went through and did an interview uh, of the candidates and presented Alyssa as the, uh, the best choice. So I had a secondary interview with her. We went forward through the, uh, the normal post questions that they have just to make sure uh, everything works well. She already has a, a, a history with not this police department, but she works part-time in another police department. Uh, it's a smaller community, so she's looking at learning a little bit more and getting more involved with uh, a larger community and uh, going from there. She does have a full-time job in a neighboring town so she's familiar with the area, but I wanted to bring, uh, bring Alyssa with, with me today as a, um, as a candidate for part-time. I did submit a letter uh, recommending her for that position, so if you have any questions of me or of Alyssa, we're here for you guys today. Okay. Dan, do you have anything you want to do? No. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Your letter was, was glowing and, you know, was exactly what we would, the questions we, I would have asked you were in there. Um, do you have anything for us to ask for about the town before we? Uh... Um, no, I've actually done a ton of research on it, trying to get familiar with all the ins and outs and everything, and I've been driving the roads and everything lately, trying to get used to it before I get out on FTO <laughs> and everything. So wonderful. Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you. Absolutely. And like I said, she has already a, a temporary waiver with Post, mm -hmm. so the certification is there. The only issue that she has to get to now is the minimum amount of hours, so mm -hmm. 2,400 hours. So she's already started that process. Like I said, she's been in, a, in another police department for over two years. Uh, I think with the amount of shifts that we have and, of course, the training time, uh, she'll be able to pass that, no, no problem. So Great. To have her. Wonderful. Jeff, do you have any questions? Nope. All right. <laughs> um, and do you need us to? A motion to appoint, yes. yes. At this time, I would entertain a motion to appoint. Can I make a motion to appoint? Uh, yeah. uh, just to clarify, a motion to appoint Alyssa Farnham as a part-time police officer in the town of Sunderland. Just what he said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you have a second? I'll second. All right. We have motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Welcome. Yeah. Um, no, uh, um, I just... After this, I'm going to reply to your email about oh, yeah. meeting this week. Hopefully, uh, Wednesday evening, or something along those lines. But yeah, that sounds good. I'll All get right. that you know, I'll tell you. I look forward to it. Thank you, Chief. Have a good one. Yeah. All right. Next order of business will be pickleball court update. Yep. Um, so I invited uh, Bill Cannon here. Um, he provided the final um, final preliminary plans, uh, which I sent along and. Just thought it would be good um, to present it in a public meeting so that the public was aware. Um, I, Bill, I don't know if there's anything specific you want to talk about. The courts would be sort of oriented north, south, side, two courts side by side. Um, go ahead, Bill. You're much more familiar than I am. Um, okay, so can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, were you going to be able to uh, display something yes. on the screen, however, Jeff? Yes. Let me grab that. Oh, sorry. My mouse is not going. Hey, Dan. Hi. <laughs> Let's see. Let me share my screen so you can see what we're seeing. Um, okay. Here's the going. Great. Uh, so I can start with this visual, Jeff. Okay. Are we all set? 
Yep. yep. Okay, so um, I'm glad to be here, and hopefully I can explain uh, you know where we're at with this project. Uh, basically, uh, I have prepared a set of, of plans for construction, and uh, just wanted to kind of go through our, uh, my uh, uh, method uh, methodology here and and what I've been uh, talking with uh, Jeff about. Uh, so the pickleball court, courts, uh, two of them, um, would be located in Riverside Park, which we, I, I've kind of indicated on the color drawing here, the location map uh, on the cover. And then within uh, the Riverside Park, I've kind of shown more of a precise location uh, of the pickleball courts. And it's rather adjacent to an existing paved walkway um, and off uh, the parking area. It's, it's actually across from the existing volleyball uh, uh, court, uh, the sand uh, volleyball court. Um, we we kind of located, we located in this area just to, to kind of give uh, some credence to uh, potential overflow parking, so we would, didn't want to uh, crowd the existing uh, parking lot. Uh, but the other thing that uh, we looked at uh, doing here was the orientation of of the uh, court courts themselves. Um, north is is going up the sheet, and the best orientation for pickleball courts are north-south orientation. So I just wanted to kind of bring that out in terms of uh, the location um, uh, within uh, Riverside Park. So if we can go to the next drawing here, Jeff. So real quick, um, just this line right here, that's the 200 feet from the river front, right? Correct. So I... For anybody who's watching, um, there was some discussion of whether or not we could fit it, fit the courts over here, um, but that we wouldn't without um, infringing on the 200 foot buffer zone. So, so. And you can see that the, the, red, the red square indicating the pickleball courts, that's pretty much to scale. It's roughly a 70 foot by 70 foot block. So you can see what kind of area that we really can, we really need to kind of work with in here for these courts. So it's, it's going to be two in courts. Relationship uh, to you know where it might be located uh, and really infringing on the 200 foot riverfront uh, area. So it's going to be two courts going long way north south next yeah. to each other. Yeah. Let's see there it is. Zoom. Okay. Great. So. Uh, this this is the uh, construction drawing layout uh, detailed layout plan. Thank you for blowing that up a little bit. Sure. Um, can you back out just a little bit? Uh, yeah. I can try. Don't let search. Because uh, I want. I just wanted to show that well, there's because there. we want to maximize the uh, solar orient the, the sun orientation, the north south <laughs> sun orientation. Uh, the best place to kind of put entrance uh, entrances to the court, which would be enclosed with a perimeter fence, uh, is to enter uh, the courts on on the south side, if you will. Um, and I, I'm indicating right right there, so that uh, your entrance can go. So that when you, when you enter the courts, you can go to one court or the other without disturbing one court if it's it, uh, if there's uh, any uh, uh, game going on, and that sidewalk would then be connected to the existing uh, sidewalk to the right uh, of the courts. I've located the courts uh, ten feet off the existing walkway, which gives enough room uh, to have to. Fill uh, for the uh, the wooden uh, benches uh, to remain, which I think might be kind of a good idea, uh, and people can use those benches to sit on to to uh, view uh, 
any court games that might be uh, going on. I think it's a it's a good orientation uh, from the side. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, go back um, towards the right, Jeff. Right. So, so the, those those benches, you see where they're located now. So they they could uh, provide some uh, good uh, spectator viewing uh, uh, with this kind of orientation. Um, we've I've indicated that, uh, and I meant previously mentioned that that there would be a uh, a six foot high. Uh, fence, a perimeter fence uh, around uh, the courts, obviously to keep balls from, uh, uh, keep balls on the court. And also um, the courts themselves would be divided with a, a, a fence, a low fence, a four foot height fence. Uh, again, to keep uh, balls from uh, going on to uh, the other courts. Um, the base uh, because of, uh, of the slope of the land, uh, we're looking at the, uh, constructing the courts so that they slope uh, from the existing walkway to the left, uh, which is kind of uh, it's in concert with the, the natural uh, slope of the land. Mm -hmm. um, we have, I have shown uh, an infiltration trench on the left side of the courts to uh, mitigate some surface runoff, pavement runoff from the courts. Uh, but uh, surrounding this uh, infiltration trench would be uh, a grassed area and would have a, 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 a smooth transition to uh, the existing uh, grade, approximately where that dashed line is. And that dashed line represents the location where we put the, the limits of construction, um, uh, erosion control uh, barrier. Um, and so that would remain in place uh, during construction and, and until uh, we get a good, uh, 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 good coverage of uh, uh, a good vegetative cover. Um, on the disturbed uh, areas uh, due to the grading uh, of the courts. Now, typically, the court this the courts uh, would be uh, uh, asphalt paved, and uh, they would be painted with a specialized rubber rubber surface. Um, Usually, a good color is the a good safe color is uh, kind of the green that you typically see on on tennis courts, um, with the courts themselves uh, painted uh, in blue, um, and that's indicated on the details. We, uh, there's, so there's a detail sheet that kind of follows up uh, this uh, site plan. Um, Pretty, uh, it's uh, pretty straightforward from, from there. Uh, there are construction details that indicate uh, the, the fencing. The fencing itself, I'm calling for it to be vinyl clad, uh, black in nature, uh, black vinyl clad in color. Um, that would uh, kind of keep it in, in a long, in a maintenance free uh, uh, state for a long time. Um, I've also called for, um, because I, you know, I think there might be some activity happening on these courts in here at the same time as um, the uh, baseball diamond is being used. So I thought it might be a good idea or a prudent idea is to put this call for um, a screen uh, fabric to be uh, put on the uh, chain link fence to the left. That, that, like the fence right there, um, which would be a screening so that uh, nobody is uh, kind of uh, distracted with either activities that might be going on uh, in this area. 
One of the things that I wanted um, to, oh, sorry. Uh, one of the things that ahead. Bill suggested um, that's in the plan is the paving goes beyond the fence about a foot and that's um, for mowing purposes mm -hmm. <laughs> so that they can just mow and they you don't have, have to, to target. Target. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I thought that was a great idea and that's yeah. one of the things. Right, yeah, I, I run into that a lot where uh, the, the right along the edges of the fences uh, is not mowed and, and the grass gets uh, knee high and it just looks, uh, I, find, I find it looking uh, kind of untidy and everything else. So uh, we've, I've incorporated this design that the pavement extend a foot beyond the fence uh, so that the uh, mowing can overlap that uh, and uh, help maintain uh, the, the height of the edge uh, consistent, consistently. And we 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 uh, take the painted color right out to that edge uh, of the pavement, and uh, it would be in line uh, on both sides of the sidewalk uh, to uh, the gate entrance. But the sidewalk itself would not be painted. That would just that would just remain the uh, asphalt color. How often does do these have to be repainted? Well, um, it depends uh, on the on the use, um, and uh, if I, I I would I would recommend that um, during the winter time, you know, it, uh, it's uh, kind of uh, uh, enclosed, um, so so that nobody's uh, walking on the snow and the ice, and they're uh, thereby kind of damaging some of the the surface. Uh, but it should it, it should be fine for a long time, um, at least five years or so, uh, before you, you might have to think about touching up painting or something like that. And provides providing that the asphalt uh, pavement base uh, is in good condition and is uh, well constructed, uh, uh, it should it, it it should be fine for for five years or so. So this is the detail of, of the exact uh, uh, court layout. Uh, um, so the court itself, as I mentioned before, would be uh, um, we call it, I'm calling for it to be a blue color, and I'm also calling for the, the zone in, right directly in front of the uh, uh, nets to be uh, blue uh, as well. So the entire court. The 20 by 44 court would be pink, would be the same color. Um, sometimes the that area in front of the net it's called the non volley zone or the kitchen. Uh, sometimes they add a, a different differentiated with a different color. Uh, but um, it's it's a matter of choice and. Uh, I like to kind of uh, minimize the number of colors out there for maintenance reasons, and so I would just, I would recommend we just keep it the same color as the volley areas, uh, which is a blue color. It's a it's a nice combination, and you can kind of see it in all the typical uh, uh, photos uh, of uh, uh, pickleball courts. Um, so this this plan here kind of it also references uh, all the uh, the associated details with the fencing um, and the, the nets as well. Yeah, and I think it, it, oh gosh, sorry about the scrolling issues I'm having. Um, I think what we're trying to do is just make sure that, that before. Um, Bill finalizes these plans and we start going out to bid um, that that there's nothing hey we we don't like blue since the bridge is blue we want green courts or hey six feet isn't tall enough we need well, 12 so, feet fences like so those. that is uh, one of my uh, questions is six foot standard for a fence because that seems relatively low to me um I, I've done them as as low as uh, five and a half feet. Six feet uh, is is a good standard. Uh, if 
So if the courts were adjacent to like a parking area or something, uh, you know, we may think about going to uh, eight feet. But eight, four, eight feet, um, it's my feeling, is a, is a pretty imposing height, especially in this area. Um, so I, I'm not, I'm not all on board on it being any higher than six feet, but uh, I would uh, uh, open that up uh, for some uh, discussion. And you know, the if we, if we want to go higher, that could be a matter of uh, a decision here. Hmm. Well, does the pickleball stand? If you have six feet, how often does it fly out of there? <laughs> well, I'm thinking more <laughs> six feet yeah. fence. Yeah. A six foot teenager is not an uncommon thing, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they can reach their hands on the top of that top rail. Yeah. And that that's my concern with a six foot fence. All right, all right. yeah, we get you. Is seeing a young person trying to scale it. Hmm. Where if it's eight foot, chances are they're not reaching that high. So determined one's still gonna get up there, but maybe the less determined one, not so much. <laughs> right, but you know what I mean. That's yeah. kind of, That's where I'm coming from. Is just being an attractive yeah, I, nuisance I, to a teenager. If uh, if I may, I, I you know for for somebody to, to want to scale this fence per se, um, they're really. I, I I don't understand it. I wouldn't understand their motivation yeah. for scaling the fence major. only to get inside <laughs> this closed area. To tell you the truth, yeah. but you know, strange things are happening and everything else, right? I say I have uh, teenage boys. I didn't so, put anything past them. <laughs> yeah, and and it, you know, I mean, six to eight feet. There's there is a little bit of a a budget increase in that, but you know, structurally the the. The posts and everything else have to be beefed up a little bit, but again, um, uh, you know that's that's a call that we should make here. Yeah, I mean, if, if that's standard and people don't usually have issues with it, like I said, that's just my concern with it. Is yep. I mean, we could even we could. I I would say you know we can go to maybe six foot six. Or something like that you know there, there are you know um, to make perhaps just keep it out of the reach a little bit and I can I can ask some other communities how high their fences yeah, are I mean like I said I'm and again maybe nobody will touch it I just I know I can reach a six foot <laughs> height quite easily and yeah, yeah um, I would say I, I, you know, it, it's. Uh, I think that's the decision that uh, we can make uh, on it uh, as a matter of preference, and you know, the plans can be uh, modified accordingly. Now, how many feet are there between that fence and the fence around the um, ball field? Oh. Um, that fence is located. It's um. I can see it there. Yeah, yeah I could see it there. I just it, it's about. I, I'm just scaling it. Sorry, it's about seventy feet away. Oh, okay. From the outfield fence of the ball field. Okay. And in a lot of years of. I know it doesn't. It doesn't only see kids get out of that field. Area, but the, I'm mm -hmm. measuring it off of my. Uh, plan my survey plan and um, it scales about 70 feet okay that's that's adequate that's good, any evergreen plantings yeah. uh, that was talked about um, but I think it, uh, there, it is not part of the plans now. Uh, so we had a question via chat if um, evergreens were part of the plan to mitigate noise. Um, I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, no, we got a question if uh, evergreens 
plantings were part of the plan um, to mitigate noise. And they said that we oh. discussed it, but they were not currently part of the plan. Where would those end up being on the opposite side right. of the volleyball court or the property line? Yeah. Yep. So we'd have to make yeah, sure it so doesn't interfere with volleyball. And it's, it's, I, I, I've, I've read a lot uh, on, on this, uh, the, the potential noise from the, uh, the pickleball uh, courts. Um, I did not, frankly, I did not notice any nearby residents per se. Um, the the side trophy line over towards the volleyball court um, is the backyard, and I think those residences are, are pretty far away from that property line. Uh, if that's if that's means anything to anybody, um, there might be a potential to put some kind of vegetation along with the fence, uh, existing fence that is there now. Um, but you know you can kind of you can see how how the noise uh, resonates uh, once they're built and they're active. Uh, maybe the uh, the existing fence would would help that's there now. Hmm. It certainly is far enough away from the residences that are on School Street over past the parking lot. Yeah. Um, I, I guess that's. <laughs> That's a plus for not putting it over there in uh, in the riverfront area as well. Uh, but you know, if there is some additional uh, uh, noise attenuation, like a, a, a hedgerow, something like that, it could always be put in uh, at a later date. Yeah, I think that makes sense the to fence, if, if need be. Would they fit along uh, in between the volleyball court? Would they could they fit right in there? There'd be no problem, right? Between the volleyball court. Yeah, between defense. the volleyball court and that, that line. I think that'd be the line you'd be most likely to put them, right? Yeah. Yeah, up against that part. There's a there's a fence that runs all yeah. along that. Yeah. yeah. I mean it's a low fence you can see it. So it's a, a start it's a, I mean, look at the fence. What, yeah. what kind of fence is it now? Is it six foot, four foot? Oh no. I don't think it's six foot. You could, I mean, I'm tall, but I, I could see into the backyards. Yeah. I, I think generally, I think it is a, I think it's a six foot fence, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay. Uh, Dan, uh, like it's like a stockade fence type mm -hmm. of thing. Okay. And then um, good. it kind of goes through that that short dog leg of, of the property line, northerly of the volleyball court area is. Uh, is a uh, pretty a pretty dense tree line. Yeah. Okay. I think it mostly makes sense to get a feel for how noisy it is after they're actually in, because we could spend a lot of time and effort get, preparing for noise that's not actually going to be a problem. Right. Um, or we could have it launch and realize, wow, this is way more of a problem than it is, and <laughs> then whatever we do is scaled up that much more, yeah. you know, to, to compensate for it. But. It's an easy add-on. Yep. Yeah, that's something we can certainly make happen if need be. All right, so I'm going to do some research on fence heights and get back to Bill. Um, am I correct in that the select board is okay with six feet if that's the nobody else has issues? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if that's the standard, you know, and again, you said if it was near a parking lot, well, it is near a parking lot. You know, he said those were things that would make him consider going higher. Yeah. And it is near a parking lot, so. Well, it's part, it's 50 feet away. Uh, the courts are 50 feet away from the existing parking lot, man. Okay. Uh, like I say, I, I, I don't, I, you know, increasing it uh, to six foot six might be a good compromise there, um, uh, height wise. I, I'm just kind of throwing that out as a possible uh, something to, to uh, consider. So, Jeff, yeah, if you could figure out, find if there's any reason to think that other people have gone higher for some reason or another, um, and also figure out what, what kind of impact to the budget it would be if we did decide to go higher. 
Because if it's going to be an extra thirty thousand dollars to go six more inches, well, okay, yeah. that's a different story entirely. Um, if it's going to be two thousand more or something that we can either absorb or you know appropriate some other way, that'd be good to know. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm having a trouble hearing some of the conversation, so I apologize. No problem. I was just asking Jeff to do some research for us. Um, thank you very much for your for your update on this. Does the board have any further questions at this point? No. All right. So, Bill, I'll get I'll get back to you um, in the next few days. Oh, sure. Yeah. Just to let you also know that uh, I haven't sent them along to you, Jeff, but the uh, spec the uh, technical specs uh, are uh, completed as well. Great. And they're they're tailored after the design in here, so. You know, just to let you know where I'm at with with the whole project in general. Wonderful. And I can I can forward those specs to you if you wanted to to check them out or anything else. Sure. That would be great. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Bill. Thank you. Okay. Happy, Thank you. Ha happy holidays. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. Next on our new business is sewer relining product discussion. Yes. We have our wastewater treatment plant operator director, Rich Brenda. Um, and Rich, I have videos and documents, <laughs> and so I don't know where you want to start. Um, well, first of all, start by introducing me. <laughs> My name is Rich Brenda. I'm a project manager with Warner Brothers with a contract operator for the wastewater treatment plant. Um, just to go back and kind of give a little history toward the sewer re relining. We did a, a round of sewer relining. Gosh, it's got to be over 15 years ago. Dan was part of that long? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Dan was part of it when he was um, at Stantec. Um, and um, that was due to deterioration of sewer lines on Old Amherst Road and South Main Street. Um, one of the last selectmen's meetings I went to before COVID, because it was a live meeting, um, the selectmen at that point were talking about the debt being retired from that sewer relying because they needed, they needed to take a loan out to do the work. Um, and they had asked that we do some additional work to look and see if there was additional relying that could be done at that time. So um, what we did is we hired a company to come in and do some video inspections and we chose areas that we felt were probably ready to be relined because we did other camera work prior to the first relining project. So what we did is we just tried to go through South Main Street, the remainder that wasn't relined. Can you move that up a little bit, Jeff? Um, the areas in blue were part of the previous relining project. Um, so we did camera work on South Main Street, basically from the Millstone to the intersection of 47 and 116. Um, that's some of the oldest sewer line in town. Um, it's, it's all clay pipe. Uh, it was in good condition when we did our, did our first relining project. Since then, it's deteriorated. Um, and um, there's a lot of root infiltration going on in the old clay pipe. There's, there's cracks and the roots have found their way into the pipe. They're going in the pipe seams, you know, typical things that happen over time. Um, the other area that we did some work on was from the intersection of 47 and 116 up through Garage Road. Um, and we did find an area on Garage Road that was particularly uh, troubling. There's a lot of sewer, a lot of root infiltration, and because of it, there's a lot of grease. So we've added that to our yearly maintenance. So when we do our, we do our pipe cleaning on a yearly basis, we've done that as a preventative measure. Um, but something more permanent should be done. Okay. Just to, just to stop is, those roots. Is it the whole length? Is it the whole? Well, it's not the whole length. Um, the area is that there, the area is basically from the post office um, to where the bank is. It's a long stretch. Mm -hmm. There's one manhole in between, but the sewer goes right through it. It's a drain manhole. 
Okay. So it's a substantial uh, length, is 600 or so feet. Okay. Um, but what, I, what I'm proposing is that we, we link together all that relining because we're going to take it to 47 if you guys if you guys feel it's necessary take south main street right to 47 and then head up 116 and catch garage road up to basically the intersection uh it's probably north silver lane at that location or south silver lane i'm not sure not a north. but um did you look at the the pipe in back have you had camera inside the pipe in back on the you know garage road on the, the red that goes up and down there um, isn't there like in the back of the isn't there a sewer running in the back there yeah there's a there's a what dan's talking about is basically from manhole 47 mm -hmm. just move up a little yeah. bit jeff from 47 to 65 and 66 that's a right away in the it, back yeah and it cuts back through we didn't do that because there's really no access back there okay um we we have i believe we have some limited information from 47 to 65. that's been problematic too in the past sure we've had some issues there so i'd kind of like to link all that together yeah and just just from a maintenance standpoint so what we've encountered um the other area in question is um out by cliffside it happens to be the next run from when we discontinued our work prior um, during our sewer system evaluation survey right was required by DEP. Yeah. Um, that area was cameraed um, by a different vendor and they determined that there was some there's some hydrogen sulfide damage to the AC pipe. Um, I tend to agree to disagree that it's bad enough to reline, but it's stated it has to be relined in the in the evaluation survey. So the the, the survey, pipe survey thought it should be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think it was that bad, Dan. Yeah. But okay. um, I, I did talk to Ty and Bond after that, and said, guys, I don't believe it's that bad. They said, well, it's out of our hands. The, the guys that do the camera work, they have certain criteria that they're required to follow, mm. and they're recommending it be relined. So okay. that was another reason to kind of look at a, a larger project rather than bring a vendor in to do a 300 foot stretch of pipe. If there's more work to be done in town, try to package together as a larger project, get a little bit of economy of scale. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've got to mobilize and what have you. And the more work that they're going to do when they're in town, it generally lowers the enterprise. So, but um, anyway, um, I don't know if you guys had a chance to review any of the any of the um, any of the uh, camera work. I, I don't necessarily recommend we, we watch the video unless <laughs> you really want to. Um, I watch a couple minutes of it and then realize I have no idea what I'm looking <laughs> at. So <laughs> it's like, okay. eh, this isn't gonna, um, you know, I didn't see any like huge cracks jumping out of me or anything like that, but you know. Yeah, it's, it's kind of boring stuff, <laughs> but, um, but in the end, it's, it's a necessary stuff, obviously. Of course, yeah. You know, rather, rather than wait for something to break. Yeah, no, that's yeah. great. Or, or other issues to show up. Um, I, mean, I did provide you with some estimated costs, more budgetary numbers, just to let you know what what the scale of the project would anticipate being. Um, we probably have to um, employ Ty and Bond, who's our who's our engineer that we use for any of our engineering services at the treatment plant. Um, to help develop the project, put it out to bid, and it got to obviously bid competitively. And um, so, I mean, this is more of an initial step just to kind of let you know where we're at um, and what we think should be done. Okay. So, In the timeline, Rich? Excuse me? The timeline for getting this done? Uh, timeline, well, there's nothing super crucial, but. Um, the area that um, is required to be done under the, the SSEES, um, I asked that we push it out 10 years just to give us time. Um, I didn't want to leave it as a five-year window. That document went in, that final document went in last fall, so September 2022. 
I wanted to give us a big enough window if we found other areas we wanted to include or if we wanted to wait on putting the project out and give us some flexibility. Okay. So. No, and I just got a, got a decent price tag, so I figured we should start planning for it now. Um, I'm looking at potential grants, um, state and federal grants that we might be able to um, apply for to help mitigate some of the costs. But um, So the last sewer relining, that was a loan to do that project, correct? I think we, you mean we borrowed, yeah. we paid for it ourselves. Yes. I believe so. So that went on to everybody in town, not just the people that have sewer. That's my understanding is it was a debt exclusion, yep. Yeah. So so I kind of have, I, well, I kind of have an issue with that because I don't have sewer at my house. I have to pay my septic. I, you know, there's other mm. people in town that are in that same situation. We're paying for our septic and our septic maintenance and a full replacement of our septic system. And, and I really struggle with us having paying a tax to take care of something we don't have at our homes. I mean, ideally, the, the sewage rate for in town would be able to accommodate this kind of work being done, whether that's, because, whether that's it goes up and every year a little money is put away for that, or whether that's the year the work is done, everyone's sewage rate goes up by a chunk for that year. That's, you know. Yeah, I mean, there, and again, but. it doesn't stop it from moving forward. I just think we have to look at a different way to fund this, which has nothing to do with the work that needs to be done. But it's a fair way to fund it, I think, is what we need to explore. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or a more fair way to... And I'm, hey, I'm, I'm all for getting grants to offset that for the people who have to pay for it. Like, Correct. you know, just Correct. as much as we can to make that as little low as possible. But I Absolutely. agree that it shouldn't, the people who don't have access to the sewage shouldn't have to pay anything for this project um, in an ideal world. <laughs> right, in an ideal world. And again, having a septic in your yard is not an inexpensive thing when it goes bad. Yes. So yeah, Jeff. If you can, you know, look into as many grants as you can. Um, and Betterment assessments and yeah. All that yeah, stuff, yeah. Just, just you know. So I'm gonna end up with a. We're all gonna end up with a big, huge mound in our backyard where Dean gets a nice flat yard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, any more questions about the relying product? No, it's, it's, it sounds good. And so, so you're doing the three segments. Is what you're talking about. Oh. Screen yeah, so, so those three in there. And, and just a short one, plus uh, just what's mandated. Yep, order. yep. Um, well, that makes sense. It's, it's old pipe and it needs to get fixed up. Yep. We just did a whole bunch of yeah. Yeah, I, I think we're all in agreement that the work needs to be done. It's just a question of who should pay for it. Yep. Yep. We'll figure that one out. All right. All right. Thank Excellent. you very much for that. We appreciate you. Thanks, Rich. Um, Thanks. Thanks, Rich. All right. Uh, last on our new business is operating budget presentation schedule. Yeah. So uh, we talked about it briefly last week. Um, just wanted to go through it. Um, so currently we have the misspelled public, the Sunderland Public Library on the 8th. Um, Tuesday the 16th, which is the day after Martin Luther King Jr. Day, um, police and fire are scheduled. The 22nd uh, Senior Center and Select Board, 29th Assessors, Clerk, Treasure Collector, Board of Health, um, and Inspectors. On the 5th, it would be Highway and South County EMS. The okay, did that get moved out? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I talked to them. Right. Um, the 12th would be Franklin Tech. Um, currently, the week of the 19th and the week of the 26th, I don't have anything. The week of the 19th is President's Day slash school vacation, and I am going to be out on the 26th. Um, so I didn't schedule anything, but we could. And then the 
we were invited on the 4th and the 12th um, to attend the school committee hearings. Uh, the 4th would be Sunderland Elementary and the 12th would be Frontier. Okay. Those are February 4th and 12th? Yes, and they would be um, oh, hybrid March. meetings. March. Oh, I'm sorry. March. Yes, yeah, March. Yes, March. yes, 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 March. Okay. Do you so want me to go back through those dates? No, no, no. no. I just wanted to make sure I knew which one month that last one was. Yeah. All right. Um, and is that everybody, or is there still anyone that we're waiting on hearing about? That is everybody. Beautiful. Sounds good to me. Um, if you can get a final copy of that out via email so that we all have that in hard copy, that'd be great. All right. Um, any questions on that before we move on? Nope. Great. Wonderful. Uh, back to old business. The first up we have is 23 Plum Tree. Yep. So... There were a number of questions from the last meeting. Um, so uh, rental comps, there's not much office space in the immediate area. Um, the closest I found was in South Deerfield and $4,000 would get uh, about 5,000 square feet. Um, in Greenfield, $4,000 would get about 4,000 square feet. And in Hatfield, four thousand dollars would get about three thousand square feet. Um, those no. those were the three office buildings of decent enough size that it could fit a senior yeah. center. So about a dollar per square foot is reasonable yeah. to consider as as which which also is sort of in line with what our mortgage would be on the thirteen thousand square feet is going to be about a dollar a square foot also. Okay. Mortgage and maintenance and utilities. Well, but maintenance and utilities, it, it gets up a little bit higher than a dollar per square foot, I think. Right. It, well, again, it, it depends well, on what, what length what, mortgage we do. If we do a 15 year utilities and everything on top of that, ends up being more like a dollar ten per square foot. But if we do a 30 year, it'd be about a dollar per square foot. Um, sorry. Uh, this office building, the size is about 4,200 square feet per floor. Um, so I, I consider that like 8,500 square feet of usable, uh, not including the basement or mm -hmm. third floor. Um, <clears throat> the Board of Health agent indicated that the septic was likely okay, but since it would probably be a change of use. We would have to, to and there's no use of senior center use. We'd have to find an analogous use and, and recalculate it. Um, he did say that when, when the septic needs to be replaced, it will need to be upgraded um, to code. So it would probably be a fairly significant. And an inspection would happen this prior, prior to process sale. Yeah. anyway. Yeah. 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 Um, so we discussed timing relative to the CDBG grant. Um, in general, special town meeting warrants have to be posted 14 days before the meeting and the clerk needs to receive notice of a special election 35 days um, before the election. So I'm, gonna, I, I'm not going to go into detail about CDBG because we discovered that um, buildings that for general government use are not eligible for CDBG funds. So um, yep. we don't have to talk about that timeline. Yeah, answer that. But there is um, a rural, a U, rural USDA program that I'm looking into, community facilities that offers loans and grants. So um, seeing what that uh, it's a rolling application, but what the application process looks like, they cover up to 75% of the cost. Um, so, looking into that. So that that's that's what I've been working on. So over the course of the last week, I've heard from a couple of constituents who have concerns about trying to move as quickly as we would potentially want to move in order to secure this building. Um, which I don't necessarily disagree with their concerns and for the most part share them. Um, knowing that the grant that we were rushing to try to meet this spring is off the table actually makes things a lot easier <laughs> because we're not 
trying to get a, a special meet, special town meeting in for you know the middle of February, um, and also just <clears throat> I can't state how much due diligence would need to be done for this to be able to be a thing. Um, feasibility studies, use studies, things like that. So, um, you know, let's, let's keep exploring the possibilities, but if somebody puts an offer on it next month, we're definitely not gonna be in a position to be anywhere near an offer at that point. Now, if, it, if, if, if the building doesn't move anywhere and it sits on the market for a substantial period of time, that might give us the time we need to do due diligence, but. Yeah, I mean, I think know. we should still keep proceeding with you know what's out there and available yeah. for us I you know and you know if this does drag out to you know for an amount of time that you know we can schedule something because I, I really do believe that <coughs> before it ever came up to you know the townspeople making decisions or even making making real they need they need to see the building there needs to be an open house there where the people in town can go walk through the building and make that decision if this is some you know something that they really feel is a worthwhile thing for us because a few of us could sit here and say it's a great building but if you've never been in it and your tax dollars are going to be paying for it i think you should get that opportunity to see the building. Yeah, agreed. And I think you can make a much more informed decision, you know, as a as a taxpayer after you walk through the building. I think it's just easier to, you know, and maybe nobody will show up to look at it and I'll have just yapped about this for over nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we could ask to do an open house. It's, would it, be like a weekend thing probably would be yeah but you know it it doesn't even have to be super long but you know a couple hours people can look at it yeah. come look at it and you know i i think that can people who are on the fence you know do we even want to proceed in this direction can make an informed decision whether or not they want to proceed after they see it yep. yeah and I wonder if we could collect some feedback as they're exiting or... Right. You know, or, you know, even if as they're going through, we give them a clipboard, right? With a little survey on it, you know? Okay. Somebody must be able to come up with... Some, I'm not a survey person. But somebody must be able to come up with some type of little, you know... Well, and one would assume that if the person is showing up for an open house for this, that they have an opinion or want to form an opinion and would like to tell us their opinion on that. Right. So uh, it shouldn't be hard pulling teeth to get people to give us feedback on that, you know. All right. Um, anything else for us on that, Jeff? Or? Nope. All right. Thank you for the continuing work uh, looking into that. Uh, next up is an ARPA request for the uh, kayak kiosk and carbon monoxide detector. Yes. So... Um, the library, I'm not going to go through the whole history, got a CPA grant for the kayak kiosk. We also got a park grant um, because the cost of everything went up during the pandemic. We weren't able to do the complete project. Some of the outstanding things, at least for the kayak kiosk, the last two things are screens and benches. So the kayak storage is meant to double as a table. but. There's no seating for those tables yet. So it's building the seating for those tables and then screening so that foul balls don't hit people while they're sitting on tables. Um, I believe that they have volunteers to do the work. Um, so all we need to do is, yeah, to install. So all we need to do is um, purchase the materials. Uh, I think UMass is gonna be doing the cutting of the materials. Um, so the total request for that was $4,000. Um, and then the second one is, so we had applied for um, a grant to install a CO detector in the public safety complex boiler room. The quote we got did not have prevailing wage. So um, we were awarded the grant without prevailing wage. It would be another 
$320 um, to pay prevailing wage, which we have to do anyway. So, that's what I think do, okay. So $4,320 is the total that we would be approving? Right, and that would leave us with a balance of $150,451.82 of unencumbered uh, our so is, it the, the, is that a deadline? Is it, it never expires. It's just a fund. December thirty first, twenty twenty four. It needs to be. Um, it doesn't have to be earmarked by that, but it doesn't have to be spent, appropriated. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. I forget exactly what the word is, but yeah, committed or whatever. Okay. Okay. Um. Any discussion from the? I'm okay. Board. If we're getting paid for materials or getting free labor, I'm all, I'm all for it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, if it's four thousand dollars for materials, it's a, that's a twenty thousand dollar project. They were getting four thousand dollars right there. Right. Yeah, not exactly you're not going to deny the CO detector. Yeah, right. obviously that needs to be done. And, and you know, aside from just being legally required to pay a prevailing wage, it's the right thing to do. Also, so okay. Um, at this time, I'd entertain. Do you want separate motions or one motion for forty three twenty? Uh, separate, please. All right. At this time, I'd entertain a motion for $4,000 for the kayak kiosk. I did. I make a motion for $4,000 for the kayak kiosk. At the Second. All right. So we have a motion being seconded to appropriate $4,000 from the ARPA funds for the kayak kiosk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. Okay. All right. And at this time, I'd also entertain a motion for $320 for the CO sector to... Aye. To motion we appropriate $320. For prevailing wages for the CO detector. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded for $320 to be appropriated from ARPA funds for the CO detector for the public safety complex. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, next up, we have select board updates. Uh, I have started preliminary negotiations with the police union. Those are ongoing. Um, I don't have anything to report on that yet. We've only really done our plenary rules and get to know each other and schedule next meetings and whatnot stuff. Um, we should have some stuff for you fairly soon, but at this point that's just ongoing. Um, that's all I have. Crystal? I've got nothing. Wonderful. I'm okay yeah. this week. Okay. That's it for us. Jeff, Town Administrator Updates? Uh, just one thing is we were, the Sunderland was awarded $107,594 in additional um, basically chapter 90 funds for the fair share amendment that we can use for roads and bridges. So just wanted to say uh, thank you to our elected officials. We yes. very much appreciate that. That's yes, old. that is wonderful. Um, and that will just go into our budget for next year in terms of... I believe things. it's the same, it's used the same way as chapter 90, so George and I checked. So he'll spend it and then ask for reimbursement. And that glass, it just sits, you can spend yeah. it when you want. Yeah, yeah. great. And we have plenty of things to spend it on, I'm sure, <laughs> so that will not be a problem. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Um, thank you for that. Is that everything from you, Jeff? Yep. All right. Um, just for the public's knowledge, we will not be meeting next week, given that it is Christmas um, on the 25th, uh, and the board has opted not to try to squeeze a meeting in that week. Um, we are tentatively planning to meet the following Tuesday, which would be the 2nd of January, after um, the first being the Monday and the 1st. Um, but that meeting may be subject to change going forward, but that will be posted at the normal time. All right. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Come on, Hang doing? on. Sorry, what's that? Do we want to have an executive session? I'm sorry. I completely forgot. We have an extra session on here. Um, <laughs> at this time, pursuant to MASH General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Paragraph 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. So at this time, we would entertain a motion to adjourn from public session into, or what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, no, we're going to uh, roll call vote to enter executive session and then we'll be returning to public session just to just to adjourn. call or just adjourn. okay so at the time i would entertain a or do we need to just roll call roll call, call. <laughs> well somebody has to move okay i, I would entertain a motion we enter into executive session second we have motion made and seconded to enter into executive session all those in favor aye crystal drake john black aye dan murphy aye nathaniel waring at 7 30 p.m <laughs> <laughs>